Welcome back to Comic Shop Talk here on Tales from the Flip Side. We're gonna talk about storage. When you have a comic shop uh, like mine, um, you're gonna get people coming in trying to sell their stuff. And uh, as you can see, I have a buying problem, but it's not really a problem when you're creating uh, inventory or when your sales match your inventory. It's uh, terrible when you don't have anything left to sell. So. Let's talk about, again, storage. What are you gonna do with all your extra stuff, right? So, you know, we try to display as much as possible. We have a thing called the library, which has all of our magic cards in it. We also have a section for all of our Pokemon, 30, 40,000 singles for kids to go through and Yu-Gi-Oh. A lot of times our play space is used as storage temporarily while we're trying to go through the collection, pull out the stuff we need to sell immediately or the stuff that needs to be put away or we don't really grade stuff, but you know, that could be when you're going through your collections on the stuff you're gonna have graded. I'm not a fan of it, I don't believe in it, but uh, if it's paying your rent, go ahead and do what you gotta do to keep the shop open, right? There's a lot of other stuff. Um, we are lucky enough to have a basement. We move a lot of stuff to the basement. Our basement is actually a lot less because we had a big sale, so we had to bring the stuff up. There's the problem in that. Bring uh, stuff going up and stuff coming down. It's a lot of man hours and a lot of uh, back <laughs> problems bringing stuff in and out of the basement we try to now we're trying to store create a storage space upstairs where we can keep stuff we want to put our hands on right away um, we also have to store all of our ebay stuff we have an office for that that we're putting all of our storage in i don't recommend that you get a storage unit one you know with collectibles an outside storage unit will not be good especially if you're in the northeast uh, even in the, nor uh, in the eastern, the southern eastern part, is the humidity is incredible. Uh, you're going to have to be in climate control unless you are out in like Arizona or New Mexico where it's desert-like conditions. Uh, even then the heat can be, the extreme heat could be a problem outdoors. The other thing is, is the cost. Uh, if, even if you get a small storage space, your cost could be you know, very low, but it's going to add up month after month. So you have to put that on your rent. So try to figure out storage in your space as quick as possible, rather than getting a storage unit uh, temporarily, if, if your wife is okay with it, is to keep them in your house. Or husband uh, or partner is okay with you storing one room full of comics. Uh, like my wife did when we first opened the business. Uh, she was not happy about all the comics I had in the house. That's actually how I came to open a comic shop. Um, she was asking me what I was gonna do with all the comics and I thought about it and I said, well, I'll open a comic shop. And I didn't tell her, I told everybody. She got them to find out like on uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I think we were at my sister's having Thanksgiving dinner. And I was like, I'm opening a comic shop. To her surprise and chagrin. I would more recommend that you, you know, find a corner in your store uh, that really doesn't, isn't good for merchandising, you really can't do any sales out of, and just put them in comic boxes and stack them all the way to the ceiling. As far as other collectibles, usually people bring them in plastic tubs. I have so many plastic tubs. I count that as like a bonus if somebody leaves their plastic tub when they sell me all their stuff. So you just get lids, you get, uh, save the lids, put them in, Make sure you store, you can stack them up all the way to the ceiling. You should not do what I do and not mark stuff. You should always mark every single one of your, your bins so you know what's in it. Try to keep the similar stuff together when you sort it out. Um, I am still in chaos. We are working out of chaos, but I would say we're probably more in chaos than not, but we're less than we were. You see how I have these, uh, these are the video games and we have them all stored. These are all boxes. These are Uline boxes, these smaller ones. We do also sell on eBay, so we have these already prepackaged in priority mailboxes. We also have, thank you, sir. Here's a Lunar box. We also use the diamond boxes, uh, you know, uh, recycle, reuse, you know, being good for the planet. Uh, but they make, they're great for storing, uh, you know, the video game systems are fantastic. But they work for pretty much everything. 
I mean, you can put comics back in comic boxes. That's the way they're delivered to you. So you, you can use them to store books that you're not gonna put out for sale for a long time. Stuff maybe you're speculating on. Like, oh, I bought 10 copies of this to hold for a year because it's the first appearance of somebody or something. So think about that also. A lot of our storage for comics that are in long boxes, I don't buy long boxes because I'm an old man and lifting long boxes is painful. But the other bad part about them is if they're short just like 20 comics, you go to lift that and if you don't have the lid on, the, the sides kink. And then once they kink, the whole box becomes very floppy. And uh, then they easily break as comics slosh around in them. And then you're also getting damaged comics because of the slosh in the book. So uh, short boxes are my preference, but all the long boxes and I have probably almost 100 long boxes in here, all came from buying collections. And we've been using them since we opened nine years. Also, um, you know, none of my stuff matches because I buy them at auction or I get them on Craigslist. If you go to, um, it's international auctions, uh, is, the, is the website, .com. Uh, they do um, a lot of government auctions, including schools. So I got all my tables, they all match. They all came out of a school. They were uh, a computer room. They were tables for a computer center for the school. And I paid $7 for 50 tables. Uh, now I don't use all 50. Um, I actually left a, a bunch behind, which they weren't too happy about. Usually you have to take everything. Um, but they kind of added a lot of the stuff on. So, you know, libraries, uh, school libraries, when they're changing their stuff, is a really fantastic place to find some um, of your, it's great for uh, trade paperbacks and stuff. They have lots of bookcases and they're all really good hardwood. So they're good to get. I use those tables throughout the store to put comics on. So that's a really good resource for getting, I um, mean, you probably won't find any like, uh, like cases for, for uh, glass cases or anything like that, but you'll find a lot of shelving units. You'll find a lot of tables, uh, chairs, um, just an incredible variation of stuff that you can get for very little money uh, that you can outfit your store with for storage. Uh, we did buy a lot of uh, shelving units through Home Depot at like maybe three or four at a time. Every time we had enough money, like three, four hundred dollars, we would buy three to four shelving units, which are great. And they've worked really well in the shop. And we've also used them to display certain stuff. So the other, play, the other thing is this uh, slat wall and peg wall and the shelving that goes with them is another, Craigslist is another great place to find that stuff. If you're willing to drive 100, 200 miles, you can put, set your uh, Craigslist to do that and you can search out a lot of different places. Also, if you're belong to, in Facebook, if you belong to a lot of comic book retailer groups, uh, I'm brought, belong to like three, you can uh, check for, um, you know, sadly, guys going out of business uh, will be getting rid of all of their stuff. So that's another great place to find shelving this comic book shelving is super expensive. But um, pretty much all the stuff that I have my toys on in the store was all bought either through auction, was found in the basement because stores that were here previously left their equipment behind. So there's a lot of ways that you don't have to pay full price and you can get a lot of storage. Uh, try to be creative. Storage can be a problem very quickly. You're gonna need to keep an eye on that. And, and with storage, um, you know, I just touched on it just quickly is that you have to store the stuff properly. Um, if you can't afford to bag and board all your comics before you store them, um, you know, I say if, if the comic is a 50 cent or dollar book, don't store it. Find a way to get it out on the floor, uh, run a big sale and blow out like a lot of your dollar books and then, you know, just refill them with the new stuff because it is not worth it to store anything that's a 50 cent or dollar, especially if you're, you know, you're taking up space that could be, um, you know, more expensive stuff because 
if you're actually doing the bean counter of you know the square footage of your store what it costs you each square foot uh, per month per year and then the space that you're using using for storage even though you're not buying outside storage from a storage unit uh, place you're, you're still paying for it right regardless if it's upstairs uh, in your regular store or if you have a lucky enough to have your basement also if you have a basement make sure it's dry um, we did have that problem we had a little bit of loss from a little water situation uh, when we had some crazy storms recently uh, so if if not dry you need to find some stuff to stack your stuff on top of you can usually pick up some free uh, pallets like wooden pallets if you look on craigslist there's always certain businesses that get a lot of these they're trying to give them away for free so you can get some of them stack two on top of each other you're getting about you know six inch a six inch rise which if you're getting more water than six inches you shouldn't be putting anything at all down there so but sometimes you know you might get an inch of water and you know if you got two pallets you'll be really safe uh, but again you know then the comics are even though they're not in water they're getting introduced to the moisture so it's not a great situation to have them there either but if you're out of space that's the that's the only your only option you know you got to use that but this is something when you're opening up your shop you really have to think about your storage you may not have enough stuff when i first moved to this 3,000 square foot store i didn't have enough stuff to fill it i had all kinds of stuff we had a much bigger play space we had a play space big enough for you know like 80 to 100 people now 30 people because i've shrunk it that much and you know that way we can't run really big events but we really weren't running that many big big events and i really we really needed the storage more and we've extended our showcases all the way down from where we used to have three showcases now we have eight but it's really important to you know we had talked about setting up your store um, this probably should have been on during that episode, but you should also be thinking about your storage and what you're gonna do with your uh, comics, toys, video games, how you're gonna store them, how you're gonna display them um, to maximize the ability for your customers to one, you know, sometimes I get a, a, a knocked on, you know, that there's stuff everywhere or there's stuff piled on top of each other. We're trying to move away from that, but uh, the same, on the same side of the, on the opposite side of the coin is that I have a lot of stuff. So, you know, when they're looking for a particular issue, there's a better chance that I have it than the guy down the street that's just doing new books. So think about the type of store you want. Definitely think about the uh, storage you need to have. And yeah, keep reading comics and open a comic store.